Hey guys, it's Brad at Yamaha Marine Center. Back at the warehouse with a 2022 Regulator 24XO. I can't believe we even have one of these here for stock. This is the first 24XO we've had for inventory that has not been pre-sold on its way in. So I will do my best to cover the bases here and uh, do it justice because we haven't seen them for very long. I have sea trialed it and it does feel like a more substantial 24 than any other of the uh, Bay hybrids that we have, which is kind of on par with Regulator that they uh, overbuild their boats. So they tend to run really nice. And you can kind of see that for a Bay boat, it has an extremely aggressive entry in the front, but length overall 24.4. I think MSRP on this one's around 155. Uh, always check with your local dealer for pricing as it will vary. And uh, a lot of the times they'll offer discounts for regional clients. But this boat, back to the boat, eight foot five on the beam. So not the beamiest bay boat out there, uh, which is kind of crazy that it still only drafts 16 inches of water with the engine up. Um, being 5,250 pounds it does have 86 gallons of fuel you should be running pretty efficiently with the Yamaha new Yamaha XCB I think is on this one with the digital integrated steering we'll go over that but uh, it, even though it's heavy I mean I don't know if you can get a good in inclination or indication of how big those lifting strikes are and how flat they are you can kind of see how shiny it is on the bottom because that big flat surface so it really helps the thing pop up on plane uh, but you still have a really aggressive dead rise to cut through those waves and even though it's an itty bitty regulator in terms of the rest of their boats they still put some nice flare in it and then that big reverse chine running the whole length of the boat and then the the forward section the shear on the boat i don't want to call it awkward for lack of a better term but it's really steep and aggressive on the 26 it's a little more progressive um so you know sea holding capabilities i think they probably did it just so it uh tracks right and acts right when it's going through you know a bigger sea state and that way it can really uh, utilize that flare if you do end up blowing through uh, a big head sea or even you know coming off the back of a wave uh you can see the integrated nav lights led not in the rubber rail but small ones on the side there uh, everything on the boat drains overboard so you'll probably end up seeing a lot of these come on focus camera around the boat uh, and then you got your fuel tank vent there coming to the back of the boat it is a white on white hull with uh platinum black platinum i believe and i'm pretty sure this is the trailer set up for it. it's an ameritrail custom made I think it's welded bunk, so it should fit on the trailer pretty good. We can see that big pocket they give you. That way, if you are all the way up on the Seastar jack plate, you can still get a good bite of water um, because as it comes off of the hull, it'll rise, and then it gives it another chance to rise to hit uh, the anti-cavitation plate, right? So you can get the boat on a full plane with the engine all the way up on the jack plate. So that's 16 inches of draft with the engine up. It is 25 uh, inches, 25 and a half inches, I believe, with the engine down and all the way down on the jack plate. So you have a lot of variability there. Uh, pretty proud transom back here, as is with the 26XO and a big splash well. And then there's that uh, current generation digital electronic steering integrated Yamaha 300. Uh, prop is back at the dealership, so don't worry about that. Got you covered. And then we'll go ahead and hop up into the boat. Hopefully, I don't break my neck trying to do this. I really gotta find somebody to film me. And there is that beautiful engine up on the jack plate. We have two big live well, release well, whatever you wanna call it, use it for bait. You have your two hoses because you do have an 18 gallon freshwater tank. And then we have our fold up seat. Oh, I thought we washed this before we packed it up, but I guess not. It's nasty. This is probably my biggest gripe about the boat though, is this seat doesn't seem to be really planned or engineered. The way it folds up, I mean, it's nice and tall, so it hits you in the back well. You can see how straight up and down it is, like almost a 90 degree angle. And then there's not a lot of uh, pad here to come out and kind of give you support but it's not uncomfortable it's just awkward i guess lack of a better term and then you also have that other large live well release well on this side and they are also insulated so if you weren't fishing and you wanted to use them for cooler space you can do that as well and then why i like 
regulator and pursuit just the engineering that goes into these boats you know there's no liner in here but they still finish everything so it's not big ugly exposed raw fiberglass it's all you know gel coated painted pumps are mounted nicely labeled uh, all their wiring harnesses are made in-house now so you get all that clean endless strand no splicing uh, heat shrunk uh, tinned copper but nice bilge access uh, seacock access get to your pumps get to your filters get to your strainers all that good stuff we got speakers everywhere i believe it's polk on this boat nice space for a cooler under a leaning post you got some tackle center some cup holders rod holders rocket launcher up here plenty of rod storage nice big clean hard top i kind of wish they would have done an e-box here for more storage or maybe like a life jacket net or something but we can always add that stuff we got room to add a couple more speakers in the hard top too if you wanted but uh like i said for a 24 foot bay boat and only eight foot five on the beam uh, this thing feels gigantic uh, cockpit space is a bit limited back here you know, if you wanted to walk past somebody you'd probably have to hop up on the casting deck or something but plenty of room to walk by this gigantic console uh, big dash we got this single 8612 on here now which is the standard electronic and then we can you know build something to put twin screens on here upgrade this to a 16 or something and we got some push button backlit leds um, we have our it's actually fusion never mind thought it was pulp but we got fusion now and we got a Yamaha CL5, so that's nice. Garmin, I think that's a 215 with remote mic. And then we got our trim tab, Linko controller down there, the digital electronic controls, digital electronic steering, which makes adding autopilot and joystick fairly easy and relatively inexpensive. Little glove box that they've always been doing with some audio inputs, power. Uh, you got even more storage down here. This used to be kind of a chart map pocket but now you can put, you know, wallet, hats, that kind of stuff down there. And then leaning post, there's no armrest. There is a footrest that flips down right there, which is this powder coat that they do is beautiful. And they got this little rubberized inserts for grip, but it is a comfortable seat. They use this uh, leaning post on the 23 as well, I think. And uh, it's actually one of my favorites for, for one of their more basic leaning posts. Again, uh, bolstering all the way around on the combing so you can still get your leg against it uh gunnel height i'd have to measure it but it comes up to my knee and i'm like five seven so i know i'm a giant inside the console plenty of room for a porta potty storage um access to things access to electronics back here padded headrest thing with access to your electronics behind there and then all your uh, breakers battery switch all that good stuff fresh water 18 gallons of fresh water pop-up cleats and then forward on the boat we have another large casting deck <clears throat> with cushions and seats cooler here and pop-up backrest integrated pop-up backrest which is nice cushions and then we have our only macerated box that's filthy dirty on the boat but it is a big box for, again, a 24-foot bay boat. And then under these seats up here, it's a lot of nice dry storage. You got a rod rack there where you can take those out. And these are insulated. And like I said, drains overboard too. So if you have ice in there and fish and stuff, it's not going to get too terribly nasty. Nice step up. Big deck. Nice caps. So you can get up there and throw a cast net or something if you wanted to. It's pre-made for a trolling motor. All around, like I said, a really nice package. Trailerable, can handle some offshore conditions, nearshore stuff. You can do just about anything that we like to do here in Northeast Florida or anywhere in the state, really, because of how skinny this boat will run over on the West Coast. And then if it does blow up and get kind of nasty, uh, you know, you got this nice windshield for protection. We can put canvas on here, and then we all know it's a regulator, so it'll handle whatever you can throw at it. So if you have any questions on this boat or anything else we have, Give us a call, 904-644-7631. Ask for Brad or Barton. And always get us on the web, yamahamarinejax.com. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, post some more later. Let me know if we can answer any questions for you on these videos, too. If you want to see anything specifically, I can gear the video towards what you want to know. See you.